I used to have DP phobia. I used to be scared of dynamic programming and every DP question is a torture. Now that I get the intuition of DP and became a software engineer, I'll share the high level idea of DP so you can solve DP loop code questions painlessly. Stay to the end to find out why dynamic programming is a terrible name that confuses so many of us. Hi, I'm Gabrielle and I'm a software engineer at Google. The idea of DP is recursion with memoization. Memoization, in short, memo, like a sticky note, is a way to remember the answer to a function corresponding to specific inputs. Memo is just a dictionary that looks up the input parameters to get the precalculated return value. Since DP is recursion plus memo, we need to first know what is recursion. What is recursion? Recursion is used when the definition of a problem depends on smaller or previous versions of itself. So to use recursion to solve a problem means we keep breaking down a big problem into smaller sub-problems. How to identify a problem can be solved with recursion? The problem depends on the answer to its sub-problems. For example, the Fibonacci number is the sum of two previous numbers in the Fibonacci number. But the previous number is the sum of the two previous numbers and so on. Then the recursive equation for Fibonacci number is f of n equals to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. The answer to f of n depends on the answer to the same function but with a smaller input of n minus 1 and n minus 2. How to get started with DP? Here's a general three-step approach to start out with DP legal questions. Step 1. Write a recursive equation to represent the problem. Why is it important to write a recursive equation? Because we can make it clear what's the relationship between the big problem and its constituent subproblems, how the big problem depends on the smaller subproblems. Once you have written the recursive equation, give yourself a pat on your back because you're already halfway there. Step two, identify the base case and code the recursive function. If you have seen my previous video on how I cracked my Google coding interview, you know how much I emphasize coding template or algo templates. Same for recursion. The basic template for recursion is an if-else statement. If it is the base case, then directly return the base case answer. Else, call the recursion function with a different input, and most likely that input is a smaller input, until it gradually reaches the base case so that it can return the answer. Make sure you have at least one base case. There could be multiple base cases that you can easily provide the answer to without any calculation. For the Fibonacci number, the base case is f of 1 is 1. Make sure you have a base case. If you don't have a base case, then the recursion function will keep on looping until your computer runs out of memory. Step 3. Optimize the recursion function with memo. This is the part that makes your recursion function a DP solution. The recursive equation doesn't change. We just tweak the implementation by adding memo, that is, to store some answers. Tip. The easiest way to add memo is to use Python's built-in add cache annotation. Just type add cache at the top of your recursive function, then it will automatically do memoization for you the recursive factorial function here will become a DP solution, top-down approach. I suggest you write down this add cache annotation in your code template like I did here in my Word doc. So next time you come across the same inputs to f of n, it will look up the answer in O of 1 time instead of calculating from scratch again. That is DP. You may ask, that would only save time if there are overlapping subproblems. And you are right. Where are the overlapping subproblems? For example, f of 4 is an overlapping subproblem to calculate both f of 5 and f of 6 in green and blue. All the overlapping subproblems are shaded in yellow here. So we memoize to store the answer to these overlapping subproblems when evaluating larger inputs of n. Don't worry if you don't understand the nitty gritty of my previous example on the Fibonacci number. As long as you understand the three-step approach and start with a lead code easy question and just code up the recursion solution, then you're already on a very good track. The next step is to practice a few lead code questions and you start to find that there are multiple DP approaches such as top-down, that is the recursive approach I mentioned just now, versus bottom-up, which is an iterative approach. In my previous video, I've shared the strategy to learn algo patterns and I made a notion table. For example, this 
row shows how to optimize from recursion to DP. I also have DP templates in my Word doc for easy reference. Tip, if I were to start learning DP in 2024, I would instead practice efficiently by doing the code questions by category of DP instead of coming up with my own categories. For example, these lists created by some Likode Saints grouped Likode DP questions by category. Here is a DP template that I found. You can try to apply this template if you ever feel stuck. Finally, to answer my earlier question on what's dynamic about dynamic programming, Bellman, the inventor of DP, chose the name dynamic to disguise that it's mathematical research. This cryptic name got to mean some things too, right? Yes. Dynamic means changing, and dynamic can capture the changing values across time. So it's dynamic across time, and DP is useful in time series scenarios in real life. I learned an application of DP in economics as well. For example, it writes the value of the decision problem at a certain point in time in terms of the payoffs from some initial choices and the value of the remaining decision problem that results from those initial values. So it breaks down this problem into a sequence of simpler subproblems. And this is the essence of DP. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I love it when you do that. As you may know, I made this video to address some questions people have in my previous video asking about how to approach DP problems. And so if you have other questions about leak code, please leave a comment below and I'll try to make a video to help address those challenges because I also experienced similar challenges before. So with that, have a great day. I hope to see you soon. Bye.